I just came back from spending two nights up north. I got back before 9 o'clock in the morning and between 9 and 2 p.m. I have done nothing. Does anyone else do this? Sometimes I procrastinate. Uh, I have a list of things to do, but I just... I'm gonna have a shower and try to like wash the procrastination off myself and maybe do one or two productive things before the day is over so that I can justify this Sunday, which I know is unhealthy, but whatever. There you go, I completed my shower and I'm gonna put in some Viviscal, a gorgeous growth densifying elixir into my hair. Gotta put this away so that I have room for. Put away whatever I used this weekend. Pack my purse for work. Keys, office keys and fob. Perfect change for public transit if for whatever reason my Opus card stops working or I lose it. Sony Bluetooth earbuds. Favorite sunglasses in their traveling case, my wallet. Lastly, mints. These are not Altoids, but whatever. Lip liner from Annabelle. Merit lip oil, which had its writing fade off. Me neither. I don't believe all these things fit in here, but they do, which is fantastic. And then before I leave, obviously, I would just slip in my phone, and that would be it. Well, it's 3.15 and I put away the clothes and hung new clothes, put away all the stuff from this weekend, washed my hair, changed my PJs, because let's be real, like I'm not wearing regular clothes at home. And I cleaned up the kitchen, so I feel better, much better. I'm gonna have a celebratory coffee and a little bit of a cookie get on the computer for a while. It is 4.05 and I've done my scrolling, I drank my coffee and I'm way overdue for another round of productivity. I have a window air conditioner that hasn't come down. I need to, by hand, because I don't have an electric screwdriver anymore because mine died, put my window back up. I did it. Now I just have to clean it and put it in the box. Taking down the window AC by myself, washing the windows, washing the balcony. I did not want to cook today, so I'm gonna go pick up some pokey. Oh man, don't you hate when this happens? To be fair, this is not a flattering light. So I will be putting in these light bulbs. This light is a lot brighter. This is a rental apartment and it's made with cheaply materials so I do my best with what I have to make it as aesthetically pleasing and functional as possible. Currently going through one of mom's makeup drawers and I have this much filled up and things to throw out. So apologies in advance if you see hair on the floor and things. I tend to do this before vacuuming. I always vacuum after garbage day. Remember the Revlon lip butters? Hard candy glamouflage. Dude, memory lane. Oh my goodness. I gave her this. Aww. Yeah, I'm surprised she didn't use it. Oh my god, I know this bag is stuff that I took out of my collection and that she decided to keep, so it's very easy for me to toss this because I know everything I gave her. These barely got used. I might have swatched that one on the left. I mean, I used to get sent so much PR, so I would usually give her the colors that went better with her skin tone and I'd keep the ones that went better with mine. I think I have the same pencil case. Well, it's actually a makeup case from MAC that I really loved from a Christmas collection. And of course, I find perfume samples, a clip of hair elastics. Remember these kind of lip brushes? You just pull them up and then it reveals the brush. All the lip liners are this kind of color. Oh my god, this is old school Rimmel Stay Matte. This is the old packaging. Mom, oh my god, this is what they look like now. The product itself is fine, but the packaging, ugh. This is not kosher. Why is this still here? <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember this foundation though. The thing is like she would buy things and put the new things on top of the old things and then forget about the old things but then be like no no 
don't throw it out funny thing about physician's formula is i started using it because my mom started using it like way before youtube and everything physician's formula was a go-to brand for us oh my god this was my first foundation new complexion by revlon memories unlocked i had terrible acne and i needed something full coverage she also had her own but oh my gosh this is so old how is this for a blast from the past cover girl olay simply ageless who could forget nyc oh my gosh we both loved the Pure Minerals 4-in-1 pressed powder. I've had this conversation with other people who are second generation immigrants and their parents, if they didn't grow up with much, they just hold on to things. When we would go shopping and my mom would buy more than one of something because she really liked it, she would buy multiple colors, let's say. She would say to me, Alexa, I'm getting this for myself because when I was younger, I couldn't get anything, you know, like I, we didn't have money, but now that I have money to treat myself, I'm going to treat myself. And then she didn't want to let go of things because she'd be like, no, I'll have to repurchase it, but she would be repurchasing it anyways. How you grow up can really affect your relationship with money and possessions. Here's another one. I used to love this as well, and mom liked it too. It was the Pure Finish by Elizabeth Arden. And if I just open it, you used to grate the powder and basically it would become like mineral powder and you would put it on. Oh my goodness, you guys. This is the last drawer of this Alex drawer that I need to go through. Ugh. In my makeup declutter, I got rid of MAC Painterly Paint Pot in the hopes that my mom's soft ochre would be okay. It is not okay, guys. It's not okay. One thing mom and I didn't have in common was eyebrows. She had thin overplucked eyebrows because in the 90s, man, everyone overplucked their eyebrows. But even to begin with, she didn't have that much. So she has a plethora of brow products. Like all of this, Forever 21, Sonia Kashuk. Oh, and this one is melting. Essence, Essence. But to be fair, I got this in PR. NYX, Annabelle, Elizabeth Arden, Clinique, Clinique, Lancome, Milani. Man, she even had Dior. This thing from Essence, which I won't open because it's a hazard. I could go on all night if you wanted me to. Mom used to use this when she lost all of her hair. So when she didn't have any eyebrows, there was this kit I found in my PR. Thank goodness for it. It's from Quo. And it was so useful because it had eyebrow stencils. So she could essentially easily draw her eyebrows back on. She used these quite a bit. And I've emptied out one Alex drawer right here. The reason for that is I want to put the shorter Alex drawer here in my room so that it's more at arm's length when I'm in bed. So I've just got to pull that out from under the desk. I thought I would be more upset today, but um, I think the daycare stuff was harder than the makeup. A lot of this was purchased or received in PR when my channel was all about beauty up until 2017 and my mom was equally as invested in it as I was. She derived joy from these items when she was alive, but it's time for this to all be disposed. declutter the medicine cabinet now truthfully i haven't touched this in such a long time because i just didn't feel like going through all these things like the cancer medications and all the boxes i used to pre-package things for her to have hospital trips at emergency Finally, this entire bag is all prescription medication that needs to go back to the pharmacy and the um, medicine cabinet just looks like this now. It's still not perfect, but honestly, I've found that in decluttering, 
one of the best things that you can do is not leave too many empty spots because we have this natural tendency to be like, oh, there's space. I can add more things. No, no, we cannot. My old cleaner was out, so I went ahead and replaced that and I actually bought a lot of things. Man, I remember in my old videos and I was doing an outfit video and someone was like, like, what is that floor? And you know what? I agree, it's not nice, but I'm very grateful for my apartment. The ugly floor just happens to be slightly less unsightly when it is clean. So this is one of the only cleaners that has worked. I wonder if this will be as good as the older version that I have. We'll just have to find out. I also went ahead and repurchased Comet because I like to use that to clean my sink and a few places. And this one's slightly bigger. Uh, I don't know why it's dinged up. It's a superficial thing. I bought a coffee machine. This one was on sale for $59, marked down from $79 at Canadian Tire. My boyfriend sometimes likes to have drip coffee. I like drip coffee too, but uh, like I was trying to wean myself off of it and just use the espresso machine and just do like long espressos, right? It is nice to have drip on the weekend, to be fair, so. I went ahead and got it because I'm going to declutter my older machine and the problem is that the heating plate just doesn't heat anymore. It just doesn't heat the way it used to. The coffee is never as good anymore. So uh, the other thing I got was a little bit of khaki because I just, I don't know, I saw them. They looked gorgeous and I haven't had exotic fruit for a hot minute. So I thought, why not? I also got a bunch of toilet paper. Isn't it the most satisfying thing? Like obviously it's just me here most of the time. It's so satisfying to be fully stocked up on toilet paper and not have to worry about it for months. I guess that's what everyone was tapping into when the toilet paper shortage happened in 2020. I also bought three books and this little doodad, this electric lighter, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Psychology of Money, and The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. I have been itching to buy a Robert Greene book. I'm fascinated by his work. And the other two are because I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. I'm curious. Lastly, I bought this monthly planner and I used to get these all the time with mom because it was how we kept track of her doctor's appointments. But I realized as well, it is a really good way to track my content calendar because I'm honestly not a person who does well with electronic calendars. I love the stuff by Fringe Studio $7.99 at Winners, which is like Marshalls or TJ Maxx. Inside you have the year's calendar some space for important phone numbers and emails, that's fine. It's got the moon phases in it, which I like, and they plop it into the calendar for you. So this is what I was talking about in terms of calendar. It's just this, and then backwards there are just pages of notes. The sides of a calendar in my other agenda I would use for YouTube stats or goal tracking, so I guess that's what I'll be using this one for. Well, I just got out of the shower and I'm attempting to nurse a wine hangover. I had planned three specific videos to film today and I couldn't do it. So instead I just filmed a couple of clips of things I was doing around the house. Way too old to go through that and I think I'm just gonna go dry for the next 30 days. So November 20th to December 20th no alcohol, I just, ugh. Like, I'm not even the type of person that gets tipsy or drunk, but it just takes one hangover for me to be completely turned off for weeks and weeks on end because it's just awful. But at least I did a couple of loads of laundry, I did some tidying up, and I also cleared out the medicine cabinet that was still full of mom's medications. You can't throw that out in regular garbage. You have to go to the pharmacy so that they can dispose of it accordingly. The holidays are coming and I want to hone in on my goals, which are fitness, decluttering, and YouTube. Fitness, decluttering, and YouTube. I wanna be about it all the time. I also want to focus on reading. Let me know in the comments below what are your distractions and maybe think of ways to eliminate them temporarily to see if it makes a difference. 